Are there any good deals out there? If you're looking, where can I make some wise investments in some beaten down areas or something that's cheap in a, a rising or very high stock market? Is there anything that's cheap? I'm gonna help you find some coming up. My name is Mike Bernard, I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. All right, so the stock market's been on an absolute tear, okay, I, obviously, for really the past 13 years, and certainly since the bottom of the pandemic. Unbelievable setting records for how quickly the stock market has grown. Feels a lot a bit like the roar, a, a lot like the roaring 20s, although I didn't live through that, obviously, so can't tell from experience, um, but certainly does feel a lot like late 90s, you know, the tech bubble, and we'll see. We will see the Fed is trying to navigate all of this and the economy is, uh, is, is rolling. So as an investor, if you've got dollars, what, where, where can you put those dollars where you're not worried that you're buying in at the top or buying in at a peak or are there any values out there, okay? Well, let me share a little bit about what I'm seeing. Every single month, uh, JP Morgan Chase actually comes out with a slide deck, updated data, um, all with all sorts of things, both the stock market and economic and international, all sorts of things, fantastic. Like a financial geek like me, oh, I, I love it. And nothing better than actually them coming out with it for the entire year, right? And so they just did that in at the beginning of January. And I'm just looking through here and looking through that slide deck and I'm looking for cheap. Everything is saying expensive except for two areas. What's not cheap, I would argue, is the U.S. stock market, S&P 500, okay? So um, we've talked about this before. It's, it, it's, its forward P.E. ratio is back at threatening levels, the highest, second highest level since, uh, or this, the highest level since the 2000 tech bubble and the second highest level ever. However, you know, we've got very low interest rates, very accommodative Fed, um, really strong tailwinds here. And so maybe, maybe the economy can grow into this, okay? But I would argue what's not cheap is the US stock market. Couple charts here out of that slide deck that reveal that and reveal some of the concentration at the top. Okay, if you take a look on the left-hand side, the top 10 companies and the S&P 500, you know all of them, Apple, Amazon, Google, that sort of stuff, okay? The top 10 have a current uh, forward PE, excuse me, PE ratio of 33 times, okay? That the average for the top 10 companies, the ones that have the most momentum and have grown the most um, is 19.8%. So the top 10 companies are more expensive than normal, okay? On top of that, the weight of the top 10 companies in the S&P 500, so how much of the largest 500 stocks out there, how much, what percentage do the top 10 represent? 30%, a third of the stock market is 10 companies. Wow, and a lot of those 10 have overlapping industries, Apple, Amazon, Google, Facebook, that sort of stuff. It, that is That should concern us, they're, they're expensive. Now, expensive. Now, at the bottom of the page, bottom right-hand side, that there's a little bit of good news. The earnings contribution of the top 10 um, it was basically lifting the stock market. And as you can see, as we've reopened, as we've come out of the fastest recession in history, more and more companies are picking up the slack. So that's good. But I would argue, this is just a couple slides that, that a uh, couple data points that reveal, yeah, overall the US stock market's not cheap. Okay, so that's not cheap. I told you I found a couple things that are cheap. Well, take a look at this chart, okay? I would argue small cap value is cheap. I'm not telling you that that's the place you've gotta be because it's gonna be the best thing ever from here moving forward. I'm just telling you, if you're looking to invest in some areas that aren't overheated, it definitely reveals, it looks like small cap value is not overheated. All right, on the right-hand side of that page, the current price to earnings ratio compared to the 20 year average. You can take a look and, okay, large cap value, 15.8 compared to 13.7. Yep, the price earnings ratio for large value is higher than average. Same thing for blend, certainly for growth, which should concern us. But yes, uh, mid cap value is pretty close. That's also 
over its its P/E ratio, its price that you're paying for a dollar's worth of earnings is also higher than average. Blend, mid blend, and small growth, absolutely. Take a look though at small value. It's current price to earnings, so price that you're paying for the stock compared to the earnings of those underlying companies is actually below its 20 year average, 15.9 compared to 17. It's represented at, as a percentage basis in that chart below. 93.5% is the current ratio compared to the, the uh, 20 year average. Small cap US, very tricky and finicky area of the overall investment space and, and, and overall stock market to invest in, suggests here there could be some bargains found there. If other areas you would say have gotten overextended or are heating up, could continue to run for a while, is there an area that's cheap in the US market? Small value appears to be part of it. The investing area that is cheap is cheap to me is Bitcoin. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know I'm not gonna say Tesla either. Uh, international, international investments. And I, you know, I'm, not, I'm not telling you this to say, hey, here's what's cheap and you, need, you should be investing low and buying what's cheap. I'm just telling you this could be, these are in a, in a very hot market, these are a couple areas that are relatively inexpensive compared to the norm. So take a look at these, at these charts here. If you're comparing the price to earnings discount of the Morgan Stanley all world XUS, so basically international stocks, compared to the S&P 500 from a standard deviation level, I mean, yes, wildly cheaper, wildly cheaper from this chart that's going back all the way to the tech bubble. It's never been cheaper when you look at the price to earnings ratio of international stocks, of non-US stocks, compared to the S&P 500, okay? And also on that page, by the way, taking a look at that dividend yield, that's very interesting that you're able to get an outsized dividend internationally as well. But this is where it's more revealing how cheap international markets are compared to the US. On the right-hand side here, you're looking at um, the, the 25 average, the 25 year average price to earnings ratio uh, in, that, in that purple there, okay? So on the left, you can see US 16.8 times is the 25 year average PE. And where we are currently is 21.2. That's the forward, that's the forward PE. So you can see, yeah, our, our current multiples that we're paying, the current prices we're paying for today's earnings are significantly higher than that 25 year average. But compare that to Europe, it's pretty close. Compare it to Japan, we're actually paying the current level is below 25 year averages. Very, very interesting. Both emerging markets and China is basically spot on. You're paying today prices that on average are where they should be for those earnings versus paying well above, well over for pre, for for in, in and uh, for that price compared to the earnings of those companies here in the U.S. So, not glamorous areas right now. What's hot? What everyone's talking about is you know is is the S and P 500. That's what's been sailing high. Commodities, even real estate. That's what's done well recently. And so many of us have investing amnesia. Where okay, I I forget anything that's happened in the past except for what is kind of most recent. And that could tempt us into saying, I need to have everything in the S&P 500. Right now, and this is no indication of what's gonna to happen tomorrow or the next month or the next quarter, whatever, but stocks, US stocks are expensive. On a relative basis, they are. Hopefully the economy will grow into them. That'd be fantastic. What's cheap, small value in, in US stocks, but international markets, especially emerging markets, they definitely cooled off last year where the stock market in the US continued to rise in 2020 international or excuse me 2021 international markets and emerging cooled off greatly it looks as though those are some value purchases if you're looking so what do you do with this rebalance you should be diversified anyway. This is not, well, let's listen in to see where I should place all of my money. No way, you should be diversified anyway. So what this means is in a very hot and steamy stock market, making sure that you're not being overweighted, you're not yourself too concentrated in the S&P 500, which is concentrated in some pretty expensive investments right now. Make sure that you are selling some of what's outperformed and buying what some of what's underperformed so that you're not neglecting some areas where you can buy 
at value. Work with your certified financial planner on that. Make sure you've got the right investment approach. If you don't have a CFP on your team that's helping you, you can find one on my team. You can find us online, corhorn.com. That's corhorn with the K, wisemoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well. Or give us a call, 574-247-5898. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.